hi for those who new and teacher Nick welcome to my channel this video content is for science form 3 chapter on respiration topic number 2.1 respiratory system do you know that our left lung is a little bit smaller than our right lung the reason is to accommodate for some space for our heart that is located on the left side of our body Let's go! the human respiratory system provides an area for the gaseous exchange between the blood in our body and the air in the environment. It allows oxygen acquisition and carbon dioxide elimination. For most organisms, the term respiration is used to explain both the internal respiration and the external respiration. Internal respiration refers to the set of metabolic reactions that occur within cells to produce energy, while the external respiration refers to the process of gaseous exchange in lungs, which also known as breathing. In this video, I will mostly be talking about the external respiration. The human respiratory system is made up of several different parts that are arranged to allow for the air in the environment to reach the bloodstream in our body. The first part is nasal cavity. Air enters our body through nasal cavity. In this area, the air is warmed and moistened and any dust present is filtered by nasal hair. Next is trachea. The wall of trachea is fitted with a C-shaped ring cartilage. This structure is to give support and prevent the tunnel from collapsing during inhalation. Next in the line is bronchi. Bronchi are two branches that extend from trachea to connect with the left and the right lungs. Next is bronchial. Bronchioles are smaller sized branches extended from the main two bronchi branches. Bronchioles eventually connected to millions of tiny air sacs called alveoli. The main organ in human respiratory system is the lungs. Lungs comprises the bronchioles, alveoli, and blood capillaries. Lung is located in a space called thoracic cavity. Our lung is protected by the rib cage, which is made up of the rib bones and intercostal muscle. The left and the right rib cages are connected with a long flat cartilage bone called sternum. The base of the thoracic cavity is sealed with a sheet of muscle called diaphragm. The 
diaphragm separates uh, the thoracic cavity from the abdomen. There are two distinguished processes in breathing, the inhalation and exhalation. During breathing, the lungs expand to allow for the air from outside to get in and after that, return to their original size and the air is pumped out from the lung. During inhalation process, the rib and sternum rise and the diaphragm contracts and flattens out. At this point, the volume of the thoracic cavity increases and this makes the air pressure inside the cavity reduces. As a result, due to the air pressure difference inside and outside the lungs, the air can flow into the lungs. And during exhalation, the ribs and the sternum back to its original position and the diaphragm relaxes and arches up. At this point, the volume inside the thoracic cavity decreases and the air pressure inside the cavity increases. As a result, to balance things up, the air inside the lungs need to be pumped out. If you notice in both cases, the changes in the air pressure inside the thoracic cavity induces the flow of air in and out of the lungs. Next in the table is showing you things that happen differently during inhalation and exhalation processes. Inhaled air refers to the air that's being taken from the atmosphere into our lungs whereas the exhaled air refers to the air that's being taken out from our lungs into the atmosphere. The proportion of types of gas for the inhaled and the exhaled air are different. This table shows the composition comparison between the inhaled air and the exhaled air for an ideally a healthy human. If you notice from the table, the composition of inhaled air is of course the same as the composition of our Earth atmosphere because we are technically breathing the air on the surface of the earth. You can flip back to the chapter Learn from Science Form 1, chapter number 7, to revise this part. The inhaled air contains more oxygen than the exhaled air. This amount of oxygen is suitable for human to execute the process of respiration under normal condition. Whereas the exhaled air contains more carbon dioxide and it also contains water or vapor. This is necessary because our body needs to get rid of the byproduct from the process of respiration, which are the carbon dioxide and water vapor. That's all for now. I hope the explanation serves you well. 
finally, please subscribe my channel for more videos. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Feel free to drop any comments if you need to say anything regarding the content of the video. Please share the link of the video with your family and friends. I hope to see you again. Assalamualaikum and bye-bye.